Proverbs chapter 15. A soft answer turns away wrath. Right? You know, not being loud, not being forceful, being quiet, quiet, meek, humble. But grievous words stir up anger. 1 Kings 12, 8 through 15, and 1 Samuel 25, 25. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge upright. You know when to talk. You know how to use your tongue. Uh, how to speak, too. You don't babble. You talk intelligence. But the mouth of the fools, which is opposite of the wise, opposite of the tongue of the wise, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. That's children. And you need to grow out of that. If you're 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, and your mouth has foolishness, you got a mouth of a child. I believe Paul says one time, I spoke as of a child. But he grew up. As a newborn babe in Christ growing, you need to speak the words properly. You need to know your tongue of the word of God. If you're growing, if you're growing into manhood, in the beginning, yeah, okay, you call your pastor, I got somebody I've been witness to, can you help me for them to turn to Christ? Okay. But you can't do that when you've been saved for 15, 20, 30, 40 years. You gotta be able to use your tongue and your mouth to lead them. You should be able to speak in age of the Bible brilliant things. More than uh, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. There should be more memory verses that you be able to quote from your mouth. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. That's not what that says. You wish it said that. Beholding the evil and the good. Now why is evil first? Because that's what we're prone to do more than good. That tells you what God thinks of man. God is all-knowing. Psalms 139, 1 through 6. Chapter 5, verse 21. Hebrews 4, 13. Romans 13, 3. God's eyes are on you. You better watch out. You better not, pal. I'm telling you why. Because the eye of God is watching you. He knows when you're sleeping. Oh, no, God does, not Santa. Maybe Santa, uh, uh, Satan does. But God does. He knows when you've been, I don't know, what is it, bad or good? Oh, gee, look at that. They got it right according to the Bible. But it's not Santa. It's God. I just realized that, that song. A wholesome, a healthy, good for you tongue. Now, I, James talks about the tongue. You need to go read and study that. Let me see if there's any notes for here. James. I don't see any notes here. But James speaks about that tongue as unruly. It's fire of hell. Ooh. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You know what Adam would have done if he were taking that tree? He would have lived forever. The tree of life. A tree of life. You know, there are trees of life in New Jerusalem. So it gives us life. It doesn't give you knowledge of wisdom and good and evil. It's life. The wholesome tongue that is. But perverse perverse perverseness. That's a word. Perverseness is opposite of wholesome. 
and wholesome is good for you, guess what perverseness is? Therein, therein what? Your tongue, your mouth. Is a breach in the spirit. And that's man's spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians seven one. When you're perverse, man, it just it just labels you. Even in the sin cursed world that we are, I mean we're we're getting away from that. There was a time you would never hear a woman curse. You would never hear a child curse. But we're getting away from that. But even still, I mean, there, there there are still some people out there, when you curse in front of them, you make yourself look like an idiot when you're perverse. Still in this country, when somebody gets involved with, with, with a young child sexually, that is, that is still perverseness. We may go away from that. It makes you look like an idiot. Matter of fact, I, I've been told that pedophiles like that are separated from the population in the prisons. I wonder why. A fool despises his father's instruction. So guess what I got to say? I have been a fool. Because there are things my, my father told me, and guess what? I didn't listen. There have been things that God the Father has told me as his child through the Holy Spirit, the adoption by the finished work of Jesus Christ, and there have been things that God has told me and I have not done. So I am a fool. If you have not done what your father has told you, if you have not done what your heavenly father has told you, you need to repent and get under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, being a fool. So you can be a saved fool. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God, but also a fool despises his father. Both heavenly and earthly. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So a prudent one is an opposite of fool, and he listens. Now, there's some things maybe your earthly father, if he's unsaved, that you cannot do. you got to use prudence. I mean, if your unsaved father gives you a can of beer and you're saved, you can't do it. But if your saved father says, listen, before you go buy that car, use your computer and search out, you know, mileage. How many people have complained about the car? What complaints are there? How many uh, recalls? Have, I mean, that, hey, okay, thank you, Dad. You know? Some advice may be bad. Some advice may be good. you got to weigh them. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Matthew 6.20. Now, what you're thinking is, you know, in your house right now. Now, if you're doing what the Lord is, in your mansion, there are treasures. See, in the house of the righteous, that's not for a carnal Christian. Don't you claim that as a carnal Christian. If you're doing what God wants you to do, and you, sometimes you're a fool, sometimes you're saying, listen, you're going to lay up treasures, God said. There are crowns to be earned. There's a right to inherit inheritance and reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ if you're righteous and you can't claim that verse if you're not righteousness by the Jesus Christ righteousness you're lost and bound for hell so that verse has a condition you gotta be righteous but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble Wicked, the opposite of righteous. You can be saved and be wicked, and listen, everything you earn won't get a reward. Burn up. Whole verse is about lips. Look at lips of the wise. Disperse knowledge. Get it out.
You're supposed to tell people about Jesus. You're supposed to help a fellow Christian grow. No time talking about baseball, football, and maybe, you know, you can tell jokes. But not all the time. But, you just love the butts. The heart of the foolish doeth not so. What comes from your lips comes from your heart. Need you to think. But this guy's heart, the foolish heart, there is no knowledge. For with the heart man believes on the salvation, with, with the uh, mouth confession, with the heart man believes on the righteous, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. His heart's not right. And if his heart is not right, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, he's not saved. He has no knowledge in his lips. Now here's a fool that is lost. Imagine a guy who does not have never been saved according to Romans 10, 9, and 10 and up at the pulpit. What knowledge is he giving? Absolutely none. Imagine somebody coming to your door and does not have the righteousness of Christ and the Holy Spirit. What are they going to give you? Absolutely nothing. Because their heart is wicked. The sacrifice. The sacrifice. Religion. Of the wicked. Is an abomination to the Lord. If you're wicked and you go to church. And you may put money in the plate. You may give time for that church service. And you're wicked, and you don't want to change. You don't want to repent. That's an abomination. Anybody want to guess how many abomination people there were last Sunday morning? All over the world? You thought I was going to say America. How many wicked people sat in a church service, even with a Bible-believing Baptist church? And did it with a wicked heart. And God looked down and said, that's an abomination. The abomination is extreme hatred. Oh, God doesn't hate. Yes, he does. That's what abomination is. Look it up. You make God angry when you come to church wicked. But the prayer of the upright is his that's God his God that's God delight you want you want to be the delight of God be upright don't be wicked and pray God loves prayer of the upright Psalms 51 verse 16 look for that verse You know, if you're humble and you love the Lord and you get a prayer, God breaks all heaven to hear your prayer. Now, he may not answer it right away. Maybe yes, no, not now. But he enjoys it. Imagine a poor mother praying for her children who are wicked and she's upright and loves the Lord. She prays. That's his delight. And those wicked children are abominations to the Lord. Oh, I tell you. I, sh I sure wanted to be standing at the great white throne judgment at that point and have your mother be brought up to you. you imagine having that woman be brought up and God just wraps her arms around and says, you know what, kids? I delighted in her. You, <laughs> depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Ooh, we, I'll tell you. The way of the wicked, we ain't done with the wicked, is an abomination to the Lord. Oh, look at that. Not only is he going to church, but everything he else does, 
What's the way of the wicked? How he makes money. How he takes care of his family. How he takes the spark plug off. How he unplugs or plugs in a, a light. How he goes to work. How he eats. How he reads. How he watches TV. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But he loveth him that follows after righteousness. You want God to love you? You follow after righteousness. You follow after Jesus Christ. See, God hates and God loves. So somebody comes over, well, God loves me. Are you walking away in righteousness? No, yeah, I do. Do you know what righteousness is? What kind of answer you get? Doing it all in love, of course. Correction. That's the rod on the behind. That's God going after you. That's taking away time that you can play. That's taking away something that is dear to you. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. See, the wicked is an abomination in his way, but correction is for that child. That's us, a child of God. It's not an abomination to God, but you know what? God corrected us because he loves us. And we're not bastards, Hebrews says. God does not hate us when we walk in a way of wickedness. He corrects us. But for the wicked who rebel against God, that's an abomination to God. And he, here's an and, not a but. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Early termination of your life is somebody who will not take reproof. I'll tell you, when you teach your children not to listen to you, that time you may be in the parking lot of the grocery store, son, what? Dead on the ground. See, when you question, there may be times of no question. And you may get to the point in your life, God keeps reproofing you, reproofing you, reproofing you, and you just don't listen. God says, hey, listen. He gives you that warning when it comes to the Lord's Supper. If you don't take that seriously, you're going, there's a possibility you can be sick or asleep. The wages of sin is death is written to Christians. Do you know that? Even though we use it for, for witnessing to lost people, that is written to saved people. Hell. Oh, Solomon. How dare you use a word like that? I can't, like, where's my Prozac? No mention hell. The Bible does. And I got a stupid note here. Hebrews, Shiloh. Pfft, fight it out. H-E-L-L. -L. Go to Shiloh. You fool. Hell and destruction. Now you take that up there with Titus 2.13. It says God and Jesus. Well, see, there's God and there's Jesus Christ. Well, see, well, there's hell and then there's destruction. No, hell and destruction go together. Hand in hand. They're newlyweds. Are before the Lord. Uh oh. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? As God can see those that are in hell, God looks at your heart and says, I can see that. Ecclesiastes 12 14, Romans 2 7, and verse 16. A scorner, remember him? Loveth not one that reproveth him. Oh, Jesus, oh, the Bible, the other guy the other day said, oh, the Bible's written by man. I just turned around and said, have you ever read it? He just kept on walking. And he has a name that's given to him. He's a scorner. You know, I think the Bible says that we're going to get a new name in heaven. The more I study Proverbs, I see the three names of people in hell. Simple, scorner, or fool. 
It's got to be. If you do get a name in hell. There's a place in the Bible that says, you know, your name is forgotten, so you probably don't even get it. But if you do get a name in hell, it's either scorner, fool, or simple. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Neither, no but, neither will he go unto the wise. Well, he goes to his mass. He goes to his hall. He goes to his temple. And God said, what? He will not go to the wise. He will not go to a Bible-believing Christian. He'll go to the wicked. He'll go to the man. He'll go to the ways of man. He's not smart. He's a fool. So here a scorner is a fool. Isn't the Bible so great and wonderful? A merry heart maketh a cheerful company. That's your facial expression. I mean, you got, if your heart's happy, your face is light, it's it's lit up, it, it's got a big old smile, and yay! True. That's that's just a main, basic trip, uh, face. Ugh. It's a truthful fact. Okay. But, oh boy. But, by the way, for that Mary Hart, uh, Proverbs 17.22. I got a note here from Schofield's note. But, by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. 2 Corinthians 7 9, Psalm 51 17 looks like. My notes are getting smaller for some reason. I mean, when your heart has a, a, a sorrowness, you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to breathe. You don't want to exist. But when your heart's happy, hey hey! They got simple the Bible? Can't understand the King James Bible. Well, go back to grade school. The heart of him that has understanding seeketh knowledge. Oh, I want to read my Bible more. So that says I have understanding and I want more knowledge. Okay? But the mouth of the fools feedeth on foolishness and that's a great verse for church versus TV you go to church to get knowledge you watch TV you get foolishness you watch a TV preacher you get stream foolishness all the days of the afflicted are evil oh but he that is a merry heart it was that merry heart has a continual feast. Listen, if your entire life, Job's life, <laughs> evil, sent by Satan because of his sin. When God has to give you evil because of your sin, sowing and reaping, it's evil. Why did God let that happen? Well, let's go back of the annals of records and see why God let it happen. I guarantee if you trace it back, there's a sin condition there. And all you got to evil was because you sinned. You you did evil. You're just getting back what you... Come on, listen. You're not going to plant poison ivy and get roses without thorns. Of all the beautiful colors on one bush that you find in the, far, the, the, the florist shop. That's not going to happen. People want it like that, but that's not so. But if you got a merry heart, you're walking with God, and you're doing right, you're in feast. Better. Now, better is great, especially in Hebrews, I believe it is. The better is little with the fear of the Lord. Better have just the tiniest thing. Then, that's a, that's, that's a but. But it's a then. A contra. Great treasures 
and trouble therein. Needs to be fixed, watched, worried over, taken care of. Better here is the fear and love. You know, you can have all the riches in the world. You're worried somebody's going to steal it from you. Or you're worried about sending your children out and not anybody taking them and, and flying on ransom. Or that wife is going to, you know, divorce you and take it all. It'd be better you lived underneath a bridge with a Bible and Jesus Christ and great riches and have to worry about it. Listen, the more you own, the more you got to fix. You know? Better is a dinner of herbs, or herbs, however you want to say it, where love is. You know, where you can have love with fellowship with somebody, better than you have grass as dinner. Herbs are, 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 are bitter, tarty, really not that good. But you put some condiments on them. The contra, then, a but, but a van, a stalled ox, and hatred therein. It is better to be having herbs or herbs with love than to be inside a pen with an ox that's angry. Somebody's going to get hurt. And I guarantee it's not going to be the ox. You're going to come out with bruises. You're going to come out with cuts. You're going to come out defeated. A wrathful, a wrathful man stirs up strife. But he that is slow to anger appeases strife. So a man wants to get in a battle and wants to fight. He's going to cause more troubles and, and anguish than it should be. But he that's slow to anger weighs it out patiently. You know, there's no arguments, there's no troubles, there's no problems. Let time, Romans 12, 18, and Ephesians 4, 26. The way of the slothful, the lazy guy, man is as a hedge of thorns. Now, you would think, okay, I'm going to walk in, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. You know, thorns hurt. That's not the case. He's not even going to walk it. Oh, and Thorne's not going to do it. I'm not going to walk it. There's thorn. It's an excuse. Call out work. Can't come to work today. I got an affected toenail on my thumb. Can't come to work. But the way, but the way of the righteous is made, made plain. There's the path, walk ye in it. It's a heavenly path. A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish man despises his mother. Hates her. Has nothing to do with her. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. Romans 1.32 Folly is joy to him that he enjoys the folly. He enjoys his sin as it's destroying his life. But a man of understanding Walketh uprightly. Job 28, 28. That's the great verse about understanding. Now, if he walks uprightly, that fool is not walking uprightly. That guy, listen, when they put on cigarettes, the Surgeon General has, has determined that this thing will cause lung cancer. Guy, I enjoy it. <laughs> Dummy, don't you know how to read? Don't you know how many people have suffered before you and, and, and around you? You are a fool. You are a dummy. 
No, wait till God calls you that. Well, if God called me dummy. Wait to God. He said he called you a fool. You enjoy your sin. Without counsel, good counsel, listen to know who knows. Purposes are disappointed. That we read in Luke today. The guy wants to build a tower. Well, he didn't go and seek counsel. He didn't sit down and figure out the money. And an unfinished project. I was disappointed. A guy didn't seek the word Jesus said, builds his house, and the storms come and destroy it completely. You know, this country sits under disasters in the wake of the end of disasters and storms and everything like that. <laughs> oh, look at all what the tornado did. Look at the bell. Well, you know what? You're destitute of wisdom. You have not seek the counsel of God. You have not seek the counsel of a godly pastor. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established what you set out to do. And not just yes men like Rehoboam had with the younger guys. You need to go to your pastor. Like I had a thing question. I went to the assistant pastor of our church. I said, I need to talk to somebody who has this experience. You can't walk up to somebody who has no idea what, what you're asking. I mean, if you if you got a question about your car, don't go ask somebody whose car doesn't run. Don't go ask somebody about a money issue and they're broke. Don't go ask somebody a, a question about God and they, they do not have a King James Bible. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Proper use of the tongue. The way of life is above heavenly to the wise. That he may depart from hell beneath. The way of life is above the, the wise. And he may depart from hell beneath. Life is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the light. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Get that. America is the house of the proud. That was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't just sodomy. It was pride. Look, look where Germany is today. And the pride that Adolf Hitler had. But he will establish the border of the widow. Old Testament. Widows were rejected. They weren't taken care of like they were supposed to. The thoughts, the thoughts, Genesis 6, the thoughts, not just actions, the thoughts of the wicked are abomination to the Lord. So the guy that goes to church is wicked. And the way of the wicked, his thoughts, God hates. But the words of the pure, pure being opposite of wicked, are pleasant words. Acts 15, verse 9. When our government, who is wicked, thinks about things that they, anything they think about, God says, that's an abomination. And then the Christians turn around and say, God bless America. Really? After that statement right there? When we got a house, we got a, 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 a 
a Senate. We got a White House filled with wicked people, and God says even their thoughts are abomination of God. And you're going to say, God bless America? Wow. He that is greedy of gain troubles his own house. Well, well I'll tell you. You know, wife's got to think about, you know, you're going to sell me out, sell the kids out. You're going to pawn things in the house and you get more? How far will he go to get more money? He's not going to be home because he's going to be at the office all the time. Money ain't the answer. But he that hated gifts, bribery, would be under this account. Exodus 23, 8. The bride, the befriend, shall live. You know, it's not a gift that, here, honey, I love you, here's a gift. It's a gift to, you know, an opposite of the guy who's greedy of gain, bribes. Hey, I'll give you this gift if you, if you, you know, grease my wheels. Favoritism. Again, Capitol Hill. Here, I'll give to your campaign if you, when you get in office, you take care of me. Why is it at the end of the term of these elections, these elections, these elected officials, how is it they are more richer than they started, and yet the people of the country are poorer than when they started? Anybody ever think about that? Are you so stupid that you vote for a guy to get richer and you get poorer and you have the right to vote? And shut up. You're stupid. You know how to fix this country? Don't go to the elections. Don't vote for any of them and none of them can get in the office. Don't, I mean, that would, wouldn't that be a shock? USA Today, day after election result. What do we have here? No one voted. Who's in the White House? Who's in the Senate? No one. Throw them all home. Get a, get a gun and defend your own house. Put a well in your backyard. Get nice, good, clean, fresh water without rat poison in it. Pay your doctor's shingles and, and what, what you have to have the doctor come to your house. You know, if he didn't have the office, he wouldn't have to charge you so much money for the rent and outrageously they're charging him. Yeah. Go on, get off the map. Okay, where am I? Heart of the righteous. 28. The heart of the righteous studies to answer. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Peter 3.15. Another reference there. I quoted was not for 315, that's another reference. But the mouth of the wicked, opposite of righteous, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. Matthew 12, 34. And you just listen to a wicked man. You know what it is? It's wicked things. You don't think so? You haven't witnessed for the Lord. You haven't done anything for the Lord. You haven't opened your mouth in righteousness to study to answer them, and what you get, what do you, what you get back? It's wickedness. When a man walks away from what you've given him the gospel, walks away denying Jesus Christ as his savior, he's wicked and he just poured out evil. The Lord is far from the wicked. Ooh, ooh, ooh. people don't want to hear that one. God just loves everybody. Really? The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is far from the wicked. But he heareth the prayer of the righteous. We just, just where the prayers were a delight to him. Romans 10 8 and Acts 17 27. You know, God's up in heaven. That's a far way, a long way, isn't it? 
You can get in a rocket ship and you'll be dead by the time you get to heaven. That's far away. But when God says when we pray, he heareth it. See, we're seated in heavenly places. That's a mouthful verse that I could probably go a whole month on. You're not talking about distance, but you're talking about distance. See, that wicked man and me, we're the same distance from God. But he's far from God, and I am not. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. You get light in the eyes. It makes your heart happy. You know, we're going to daylight savings time, and when we spent, we go earlier, because when we stay the original time, it, when it gets dark down there, it, it just, it's not a happy thought. You don't have confidence when you got to get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom or go get a drink. You don't have confidence that you do during the day, because what am I going to kick? What am I going to hit? Is there something on the floor I'm going to step on? And a good report, and, this is and, conjunction, conjunction, watch your function. Well, I can only remember scripture like I can remember those stupid old songs. And a good report maketh the bones fat. Matthew 6, 22. A good report is health, according to the Bible. Health down to the bones. What's a good report? Anything that's pleasing. Good tidings is the gospel. Here is somebody got saved. That's strength. Bones are strength. Makes you stand up. I can't imagine what boneless chicken around the farmyard. Jello. Yeah, evolution. Imagine if evolution didn't give us bones. We'd be jello. The ear. The ear. We're looking at physical health now. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. So when you hear reproof, you keep it. So we got the verse we got the verse and now look at the next verse as a but. It doesn't say but, but the eye and a but. He that refuses instruction, what goes in the air, despises his own soul. So when you tell someone about Jesus Christ in their rebellion, that's not you. Don't think somebody, when they turn against Jesus, go, oh, what did I do wrong? That is them. If you told them the gospel and they walked away, that is them that rejected, not you. We plant, we water. God gives the increase. But he, there's a but, ooh, my boy. He that heareth reproof, getteth understand the way of knowledge. Know the Lord, the know of the holy. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And, what a good way to end this chapter, and, not but, and, before honor is humility. You know what Jesus said in Luke? He said, don't go sit up in the, in the most important spot. Go sit at the, at the low spot and let them bring you up. Listen, if you're humble, Jesus Christ will, will exalt you at the judgment seat of Christ. Look all my pride. Look what this Christian has done as I put the crowns upon his head. Matthew 23, 12, and James 4, 6 through 10. As we close out another chapter. 